I wanted to go back to the beginning and just what it was like, you know, to have this, you know, when you when you started writing, when you started with the whole process, when you started with everything, and then they were like, yeah, we're gonna publish. <laughs> So what was that like? I'm sure it must have been, you know, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's start from the beginning. Okay. From the very <laughs> beginning. Um, I, I, like I said, I started with um, the Stones Blanches. I was inspired by Outlander, actually. I was going to yeah, say that. it is. So many yes, Outlander it vibes. Is. It's, it's like insane. Outlander fan fiction, right? Right. Oh. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. No, it is. It's no, but, but, I, but it's reminding me yes. a lot of yes. Yeah, so I, it was season two, yeah, where Jamie calls Claire um, yeah. Little Blanche in, pla- in passing, and I was very intrigued by that, and so right. I started researching it, and that's how I learned that it was this, like, French folktale um right so at that point in my life i had two children i had just had my second child and he was three months old and my first child is only like 17 months older than her him so i have very close together yeah very very young children and i felt like i was kind of lost um i had lost a lot of my identity i had just become their mother which i love my kids obviously I love my kids um, but I, I felt like I wasn't a person anymore I was just a mom um, and so I needed a, I needed something for myself and I had I had written a lot as a child um, I wrote short stories and I wrote poetry it was very bad very very bad so I started writing it at night when my kids were sleeping like after they went to bed um, I would write until like two or three in the morning you know I was just on fire for that story uh, I was so excited to get it to get at the computer every night. Um, and I started publishing it on Wattpad. I ended up finding, um, there was a book, and they publish it every year. It's like Guide to Literary Agents. So they hide, they, they gather mentors, so um, agented writers, um, published authors, um, so, so people oh, who, who have knowledge of the, of the publishing industry, essentially. And um, those mentors, you submit to them, anybody can submit to them, and um, they choose someone to work with for like a um, month or two, um, depending on when you did it. Uh, yeah, and I, I entered it, and I somehow I got so lucky, and I was chosen to work with a mentor. Um, and so we revised. Uh, the book was called Just Split on Blanche back then. Oh, yeah, okay. it was. Yeah, oh, and we revised it a lot um, in a very short amount of time. Uh, the the book the original draft was told in third person ah. and it was only Lou oh. as the main character so Reed didn't have a point of view oh. uh, so as I was revising in Pitch Wars you know we changed it to first person so we're inside Lou's head um, and then we added Reed every other chapter so it was a lot and it was like in a month it was wow. <laughs> super super uh, intensive. So I was wondering, what did you learn uh, for the second and the third one? Because we're talking about the trilogy. We yeah, can see it right exactly. There. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I'm sure you must have learned. So I much. did. I did learn a lot, not only about the industry, but also right. just about the craft of writing. Um, with Serpent and Dove, I didn't know anything. Right. I was just sitting down and sort of like it was fan fiction. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It was so much fun and. Um, you know, we, we fixed a lot of, like, the structural things and revisions, but I tried to avoid that with the second book. Oh, I tried okay. to learn, like, okay, you can't just have, you know, 5,000 words here where they're, like, walking, holding hands through the city, you know, or whatever. <laughs> like, there has to be, like, a point to every right. scene. It has to, like, propel the plot forward or whatever. Um, so with my second book, I really tried to plot okay. a lot. I use Save the Cat, um, writes a novel. It's a, oh, yeah. the beats, the yes. story beats. Um so I plotted the second book very heavily, almost to the point where it killed the joy, because um, I'm a discovery writer, so I, I, it's like almost like I need to like get into the scene and learn stuff about the story as I'm writing it to like keep me excited. Um, but I, I, I did, um, I had to rewrite a lot of Blood and Honey. Um, that book was really hard. A lot of authors talk about how their sophomore books are very hard. It, it is. It's hard because it's the first book that you write in the industry, right? So oh, it's the first book that you write where you're, you're, you're actively thinking, will readers like this? Will my editor like this? Will my agent like this? Am I going to have to delete this part? Like, you yeah. know, and it, right, the first one you have all the exactly. joy. Okay, I'm doing this for me. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. And so with the second book, there was a lot more pressure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there was. And 
I don't know. I don't do well under pressure. <laughs> but, uh, well, you certainly yeah, need. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I did. I did with the second book, and I I love the second book. Right. It is much darker. Um, it's much heavier. Um, the themes are, uh, which which were necessary for the characters. But um, I did. I did try to do some things with the second book, with world building and, and things to sort of prove myself like as a serious writer like I can do fantasy I can <laughs> have all these rules to my mat like you know I just I, things that maybe I wouldn't have necessarily done in the first book um and then it wasn't received as well the second book wasn't received as well as the first one um and that's fine I, we could talk about it um, but so I did learn not to do that not to like let criticism obviously if there are problematic elements you you receive that criticism and you do better but like yeah. just story criticism like I didn't like this part or I thought it was slow or what I you can't internalize it because for every person who says the world building was awful another person says I love this world uh, I wanted to talk about the fandom because you know we we mentioned yeah that you were mentioning that earlier And, um, well, it has a huge uh, amount, you know, there are a lot of fans, a lot of people that you, you can see on YouTube, like, yeah, the review is out, and you yeah. talk about it. So, what it was like for you to actually receive this kind of love, and when, all the, at the same time, all the opinions at the same time, and <laughs> you have, you know, this, this fandom, this group of people yeah. that love your books. I right. never expected to have a fandom. <laughs> right. I mean, I seriously, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think that anything was going to come of the book. Um, you know, I didn't expect it to. So it's just been almost surreal. Like it doesn't feel real. Right. To to see people drawing my characters, and I mean that takes a lot of time to to do character art and to do you know the reels uh, where they dress like cosplay and they dress up as the character. That takes time. Yeah. Like so that somebody just connected with the book and the characters enough to to give it, they're essentially giving me that time. It just feels like such a gift. It's just yeah. amazing. It's wonderful. I just it makes my day every time I see it. Just to play around. I mean, if you could cast anyone, <laughs> they already asked you this question. No, I, I do get this question a lot, yeah, and I don't. Yeah, I just, don't have a super satisfying answer. Oh, you the don't. Problem. No, because when you read it, you're like, yeah, yeah this could be me. <laughs> don't you? Do yeah, no, I do. I I do envision it as I write, which is why I'm so slow. Oh, I'm okay. so slow. <laughs> so like in a fight scene, I have to like Google choreography. Like, what would you actually do oh, in this cool. situation to get out of this move? And and then I like to describe it. It. I'm so slow, but as far as a fan cast, right? I um I don't have anyone for Lou. Oh, I feel okay. like Lou's really hard. I haven't seen anyone where I'm just like, yes, that's her. Oh, okay. um, but Reed, um, I watched Sanditon when it came out. Um, it's the it's the Jane Austen. It's her unfinished novel. She oh, had that okay. one, and they adapted it for screen. Um, okay. And they just renewed it actually, so that's okay. good. But in the first season, there's a there's an, uh, a character. His name's Mr. Stringer. Um, and the actor who plays him, I was like, if he oh, dyed really? his hair red, that could be him. And his name's Leo Suter. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, he uh, he's in like a Viking show on Netflix now. But oh, okay. I, oh, I, 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 I saw that show. I, I didn't. Yeah, know. it's the uh, Vikings of Valhalla. Oh yeah, 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 right. yeah. And, yeah. And he's he's like the main guy with like the bun. Okay. <laughs> he, like, he had short hair. So and if you're watching yeah. these, then. <laughs> You might be on this movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Anyone he, from Outlander? I mean, I mean uh, Jamie was, was obviously the original inspiration. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tall and red hair. I was going to go with that one. I was obsessed with him. <laughs>